So today we're going to be making some Python code uh, to determine the head drop given a flow rate or flow rate given a head drop for a given uh, pipe segment. Uh, but first, we're going to start off by calculating the fanning friction factor because that's going to be used in our equation for flow rate and, and head drop. Um, and the equation that we're going to be using to determine this is the Churchill equation. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. And you can see, I've, well, I misspelled it. But um, I did some searching for it beforehand. Um, and the only change that we're going to be making to this is that instead of expressing uh, the roughness over a diameter um, as two separate variables, we're going to be expressing it as one variable. Because if we look at something like a Moody diagram, uh, where we, let me find one that matches, okay, where we have uh, the Reynolds number along the uh, uh, x-axis and the friction factor along the um, y-axis, um, it usually expresses it in terms of relative roughness, which is like the absolute roughness, the total roughness of the pipe, uh, divided by the inner diameter of the pipe. So um, in this case, we're going to be using uh, uh, epsilon over D as one variable. So looking at this, um, this is the overall form of the equation. Um, and then these two variables, A and B, sometimes they're expressed as theta one, theta two. Uh, but I'm just going to call them A and B for now. Um, and these are expressed in terms of the Reynolds number, uh, which we also have uh, an equation for. And we're going to, but in this case, we're going to be supplying that to the Churchill equation uh, because this Reynolds number is going to be changing based on our conditions. Uh, so we can start off by just defining a few things. Um, and I already went ahead and imported NumPy here. Uh, but we can go ahead and define a few things uh, like the viscosity of water. Uh, the density of water, and then the acceleration due to gravity. And from there, we can go ahead and just uh, start putting in our Churchill equation. Um, I'm going to go ahead and split this up so we can see them both at the same time. Uh, that's not the right one. Oh, there we go. All right, so uh, we're going to be defining Churchill. And again, we're going to be using this um, in our equation. Like, we're going to be using the Churchill equation within our other equations. Um, but instead of writing it out each time, it's just easier to make one function for it. Um, actually, surprisingly, Churchill has only one H. I always thought it'd be church and then hill, but I guess not. Um, and then we're going to be supplying it our Reynolds number and our epsilon over D. We'll just call it uh, epsilon D for now. And uh, before we can give the full um, term for, um, or the full return for the friction factor, the fanning friction factor, uh, we need to define our A and our B. Uh, so we're going to say A is equal to uh, well, let's start from the inside. So we will have one divided by seven divided by our Reynolds number. Two, okay. Um, and then that'll be to the 0 0.9 plus 0 0.27 times epsilon d. OK, that's, that looks good. Um, and then that will, we're going to be taking uh, the natural log of that. So we're going to be using a numpy log. And then we're multiplying all of that by 2.457. And we're raising all of that to the 16th power. And B is a little nicer here. And that's just going to be 37,530 divided by uh, the Reynolds number to the 16th power. And then uh, our return, and you can hear my 
phone on the ceiling going off. Should have turned off my uh, ringer. Uh, but our fanning friction factor is going to be eight times. Uh, let me start off with eight eight over our Reynolds number to the twelfth plus one over a plus b um, and then that a plus b is to the uh, one and a half power so let's do that Okay, and then this whole thing is going to be multiplied by 8 and then raised to the uh, 1 12th power. All right, let's see if that gives us any air. Looks good. And then we can go ahead and define and put in our um, equations for both uh, flow given head drop and head drop given flow. So now what we're going to do, and actually I forgot to put in a negative sign here, uh, but now what we're going to do is calculate our head drop given flow. Um, and I actually found a handy dandy PDF from Clarkson University uh, that has some of the equations we're going to be using, namely this volumetric flow rate, as well as this head drop um, equation. And I'll go ahead and tile these actually so we can look at both. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Clarkson University, for this. Uh, but our volumetric flow rate, Q is equal to pi over 4 d squared over v, but you'll notice in our um, d squared v, not over v, uh, you'll notice our uh, head drop equation actually has um, uh, velocity in it instead of volumetric flow rate. So all we have to do is uh, swap this V and this Q around. Well, you know, do it algebraically correctly. Um, but uh, that'll give us our um, our uh, velocity that we need. So we're going to define an equation called head drop. And our inputs are going to be our fanning friction factor. Uh, but we're actually going to be calculating that from um, the other stuff we put in. So we want our, um, we're, we're going to be putting in our diameter, our uh, length of pipe, or the change in length of pipe. Uh, we already have G, so we don't need to input that. Uh, we're going to be putting in our volumetric flow rate. And uh, if you look back up here for our Churchill equation for calculating the fan friction factor, we need the uh, relative roughness of our pipe. So we're also going to be putting that in. And then uh, we'll add a term for, um, well, you know what, we'll ignore that for now, and maybe I'll add that at the end. Um, for now, we're going to pretend that there's no special fittings that have any effect on our volumetric flow rate, or our uh, head drop, I should say. So the first thing we can do is calculate our velocity from our uh, volumetric flow rate. And uh, something we're going to do here is we are going to take the absolute value, um, the absolute value of our uh, volumetric flow rate, because if we have backflows or something, we don't want that messing with the calculations down the line. Uh, and then later on, we can just copy, or, uh, copy the sign of Q into our uh, final expression. But for now, we're just going to take the absolute value of Q. Co-lab lets me get back in the cell I was in. So we're going to have Q, so the absolute value of Q divided by um, pi divided by four times our diameter squared. And that will be our uh, velocity. And uh, we need our uh, fanning friction factor. And we can get that from our Churchill equation. So we have, well, first off, before we do that, we need to uh, come up with a term for our Reynolds number. 
and that is just going to be our diameter. times our velocity, times rho, divided by mu. And then our fanning friction factor, uh, we're going to plug in our, our expression for our Reynolds number, and then our input, um, the relative roughness, into our Churchill equation. And then we're going to return uh, our head drop. So we have two times our friction factor times uh, our length over our diameter times uh, velocity squared divided by g. Um, and then uh, we're going to copy the sign of uh, Q. Or sorry, uh, actually, let me take this out for now. We'll come back to that. Um, I can't remember if we actually need it here, so I'm going to uh, figure that out in a second. Uh, but then this is our expression for um, our head drop given flow. And I'll come back and test this in a little bit, but next we're going to do our uh, flow given head drop uh, because that's a little more interesting and it involves using uh, scipy root. And actually, let me go ahead and um, let me go ahead and input that now or import that now. All right, so um, I did actually have to make a few changes. I had this negative sign in the wrong place, and then I actually had this. Um, density uh, is 1e minus 3, uh, which obviously is six orders of magnitude off, so I was not getting good answers. Um, and then uh, I'll go ahead and do this again. Uh, but we are going to put in a copy sign here, and all that is is you specify the function that you're copying sign to uh, or in front of. And in this case, that'll just be our uh, full um, uh, head drop equation. And then the variable that you're copying the sign from, and then in this case, that's Q. Uh, I probably just forgot. Yep, forgot a parenthesis. A lot of parentheses here. I probably don't need all of them, but if it works, it works. Um, and then we'll go ahead and test that now, actually, just to make sure it's working uh, before we go ahead and try the flow from head drop. Um, and then We'll go with a really big pipe here. Um, we'll go one meter in diameter. We'll go, we'll go 100 meters long, volumetric flow rate of, say, five. And then our internal roughness, our relative roughness, I think I just have a parenthesis in a wrong spot here. Remember when I said if it works, it works. Uh, there we go. All right, so that is um, the head drop in meters that we need to get that kind of flow rate. Um, and since our uh, pipe is so large, we don't actually need that much uh, head drop. Uh, so now we're going to go ahead and try uh, f figuring out our flow from our head drop. Uh, and this is a little more complicated, and we're going to be using our um, SciPy optimized root for this. And actually, before we go any further, um, I am going to toss in an expression for k here. Uh, I did not mean to do it down here. Um, and all this does is it lets us take into account any pipe fittings or um, bottlenecks or things like that that might change the um, head drop. And all we have to do for that is add in a term plus k divided by 2 divided by g times, phone went off again, times 
v squared. Uh, but this will just let us take into account. Um, maybe you have a bunch of fittings on it or something. All you have to do is sum up uh, the total k values. Uh, for now, we're not going to do that, so we'll just set k equals to zero, but it's nice to have in the future if we ever use this. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure a function to determine our uh, flow, give it a head drop. Um, and it will be the same inputs, but instead of uh, flow rate, we're given a head drop this time. And then k, we're just going to set equal to zero again. Um, but you'll notice that if we look back over here at our equation for volumetric flow rate, uh, we have to know the velocity of the fluid, uh, but we don't know that in this case. So we're going to have to come up with an equation to make an educated guess uh, for the volumetric flow rate. And then we're going to be plugging that into um, as the starting point for a root solver. And then what the root solver will do, we'll it'll take uh, the difference in our uh, supplied head drop and our calculated head drop for a given flow rate and try to minimize that by, um, or trying to set those equal to each other by changing uh, the volumetric flow rate that's given. So um, what we're looking for is we want our head drop minus the head drop given uh, the same supplied um, diameter length uh, Q, which will be supplied to, uh, which is the uh, variable that our um, root solver is supplying. Uh, but our diameter, our length, our head drop, or our Q, uh, our relative roughness, and our K, uh, but we're going to actually make this its own equation because um, our, our root solver is expecting a um, vector as the input. And then we'll just set Q is the first index of that vector. And then uh, we want to return this as an array itself. And then for our flow rate, uh, we need to return our uh, the root of our equation here, and um, starting with an input of our Q guess. Uh, we haven't defined this variable yet. We'll go ahead and do that in a second. Um, but for now, we're just going to take the first uh, value of our uh, root solver output. This will probably give me an error. Uh, um, oh, I just missed an indent here. There we go. I'm surprised it didn't give me an error with this, uh, but we'll go ahead and define that in a second. So again, what this is doing is it's taking our supplied head drop uh, calculating a head drop with uh, different parameters. Um, but this time, instead of supplying the volumetric flow rate, um, since we don't know that, we have to make an educated guess for it. And then from there, uh, our root solver will change the volumetric flow rate over time uh, to try to get the difference between our um, supplied head drop and our calculated head drop as close to zero as possible. Uh, so now we need to come up with an equation for a cube guess, and ideally we could just take um, uh, this equation here and solve for v. Uh, but the issue is that we don't actually have um, a satisfactory, or sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, we could just take this equation for head drop, and since we're supplying a head drop, uh, we could solve for v. But the issue is that our fanning friction factor, uh, which we calculate up here, actually depends on a Reynolds number, which uses a V that we don't have, a velocity we don't have. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a Q guess and we want that Q guess to be um, using an estimated fanning friction factor um, and then we can just solve algebraically for the rest of this. So the way we're going to do this is it'll be our Q guess will be equal to um, 
let's see, we have our head drop. We're going to have to multiply it uh, by GD. Um, we'll say our fan friction factor is 0 0.01 for now. Uh, so let's multiply across by GD. And uh, we need to take the absolute value of our head drop. We can do the copy sign again. Uh, we'll do that and then the, the copy sign. Uh, so let's take the absolute value of our head drop, multiply it by D, multiply it by G, uh, and then we're going to divide. Uh, since our fanning friction factor, we're going to say is 1 100th, uh, we will have divided by 0 0.02. times, uh, it looks like uh, our L, our length, um, and then uh, that'll just leave us with the velocity on the other side. So we need to take the whole square root of this. And then we can do the M key copy sign. Uh, using Q, or sorry, using head drop this time. All right, so theoretically we should be good to go. Um, so if we plug in the output from our previous um, flow calculation, we're looking for a flow rate of five uh, liters per second. So let's see if we have uh, 7.27, or sorry, uh, it goes DL, so our diameter is one, uh, that's not one. Length of 100 meters. Our head drop. Uh, we're going to put in the output from the force of 7.271448, and after that, it's fine. Um, and then our um, relative roughness. Theoretically, we should get a number super close to five. And look at that, uh, it works. And just for fun, um, let's try out um, having to input our own K here. So say we have a few pipe fittings um, and they have a total K value of, what to say, two, uh, just for fun. And uh, if we run all this again, Uh, this doesn't really matter. This is just from before. Uh, but theoretically now, it should give us a value. Um, oh, we have to update our uh, input head draw. Theoretically, this should give us a value close to 5 again. And there we go. Um, I could add a term in here for a cube guess that uses um, the value for the fittings. Uh, but since um, our root solver is going to be iterating through it, I don't know if that's really necessary. And sorry, one quick correction. Um, I actually said that the volumetric flow rate was in liters per second, but it's in cubic meters per second.